Welcome back to the channel, everybody. If you're new to the channel, thanks for showing up. Don't forget to subscribe. So this video just covers tension and compression wood. If you're just wanting to watch the log being cut into lumber, um, that video was the second half of this, and it's becoming Friday. If you've ever seen a board that came directly off of the sawmill that was crooked or bowed, the tension and compression wood was probably the reason. I think there's a lot of people out there that have recently bought or looking at buying a simple manual sawmill, um, but really don't know that much about sawing lumber. Um, so today I've got a little pine log here. Um, this is the small end. It's uh, about 11 inches under the bark. The pith is pretty well centered on the top end of it here. Um, it's got very few little knots on it. Um, this appears to be the butt log. I say that because it has a pretty fair amount of swell to it. So this was... 11 and a half on the small end if we go up to the big end we're looking at 14 11 and a half that's a fair amount of taper in a pine log that's only I believe about 10 and a half foot long when we throw tape on it yes 10, 10 six and a half um, you can tell by looking at the stump end of it that the pith is a little bit out of center Oh, the pith from the under the bark is where I always try to look at because the bark varies in thickness so much. So under the bark to the pith, we're looking at six inches on this side, which seems to be about the worst. And we're at eight and a quarter. Yeah, about, about eight and a half is the worst. So the pith is out of center on the stump end. Um, it doesn't really appear to be much of a crook, but there may be just a little bit. Um, so I don't know if I can get it where I can show that on the camera. If we look right down this side, there seems to be a little bit of a sweep to the log. Looking down the other side of it, it really looks pretty straight. So the bulk of the swell from one end to the other happens on this side. And that's where the pith is out of center toward so I would say that this tree was leaning at the ground so it was a pretty straight tree with the exception of right at the stump it did wasn't plumb so as a tree leans like this it grows what's known as tension wood on this side of the pith and compression wood on this side of the pith so as you can see the the growth rings are a lot tighter over here there's the same number if you used to count them there's the same number of rings on this side of the pith as this side of the pith it doesn't grow a different number of rings they're tighter together over here and the sap portion of it makes this side stronger in compression 
and it grows farther away from the pith in that direction to hold tension down to keep the tree from bending over. So as we saw that, we need to be aware of that because that will cause the boards as we cut them to bow. And of course, most people call a board if it's crooked on its wide axis, it's crooked. And if it's bent on its narrow axis, it's bowed. So a flat board laying like a, a diving board that tipped up at the front would be a bowed board. A diving board that turns to the left or right would be a crooked board. So what we're going to do now is get this thing loaded up on the sawmill and uh, take it a little further. Okay, so now we've got this little log up on the mill. Um, tried to get the camera set up where we can get a good shot of the butt end of this thing. Because that, that's where the biggest problem is in the log. Um, so back where was that? This is the short side. I'm going to highlight the pith right there just so it's a little easier to see maybe on the video. Um, so we've got decisions to make. How are we going to cut boards out of this that will be usable boards? That, that's what we're after is cut, dried, and ready to use how many boards that we cut out of this log are going to end up as a usable board in the end. So any, anybody with a little amount of skill could cut this log into boards just like slicing bread. I mean, I've seen lots and lots of these videos out on the internet where people just set up a big old log and just start cutting boards off. And you can sure enough cut boards off, but when you get them dried out and ready to actually use them for something, are they going to be a good enough quality board to do anything with, or are they going to be perfectly good kindling? And it, it's a lot easier to make kindling other ways besides with a sawmill. <clears throat> so back again, over in this area, we're looking at compression wood. And over in this area, we're looking at tension wood. So if at any time we slice a board off over here like this, vertical almost to how I've got it sitting, this is going to try to peel up because this is under tension long ways. Think of it like uh, cables running through this side of the tree, little tiny cable fibers trying to hold the tree from tipping over in this direction. So as we separate those fibers, this side of the pith is going to try to peel up this away. Um, if we try to cut boards off of this thing, this away they're going to crook they're going to bend this away so depending on how bad the tension is how far off center this is um, how much the tree was leaning to, is going to determine how much tension is in this side of the tree um, they, that you can get them where it's a far off center under tension that it's a waste of time. Um, I've got a tree right outside the sawmill shed here that's a pine about this size. It must be 70 feet tall and it leans over probably 20 feet. And I bet you if I cut it down, the pith would be over here and all of the saprings 
would all be concentrated for the whole tree right over here. And these would all be spread out over here from, from here all the way over, trying to keep that tree from turning over. So what we've got to do is try to figure out how to beat this tension and compression wood. So we need to, to beat it, we need to understand it. So one thing that we need to do in our understanding of it while we're sawing it is try to keep it balanced. If any time that we see that the entire cant is crooking in a direction, then we need to flip it away from that direction to balance out on the other side of the pith, whether we're it's crooking this way and we need to cut off of this side to get it to come back, or whether it's left and right. So the order I'm trying to fill is getting some two befores out of this log. Um, so two befores out of this may be problematic, but that's that's what we're going to shoot for. Um, you can't always help what you need at the time and the log that you've got to do it out of. So what I would like to do is start cutting in this area here. Um, I definitely don't want to start by cutting over here. If I cut over here, it's going to imbalance the compression and tension wood and the whole cant is going to start bowing. So what I need to do is start cutting off of this side and this side. And that's where part of where a, a hydraulic mill is better than a manual mill is I may have to cut one board off of this side, flip it and cut one off of this side, flip it back and cut another one and, and keep doing that. Um, this doesn't look like a good contender to cut a nice big can out of the middle and then just start chopping wood out of it. It, it doesn't look like a good contender for something like that. You could do it. How many usable boards is the key. So on the other end, you got to remember the, the pith is perfectly centered on the other end. So it's something like over here. Um, and that it the uh, out of center isn't dramatic in this log, but it is present. Um, when I cut this very first cap cut or slab cut, whatever you want to call it, off of the top of here, I'll bet you you're going to see it walk left or right. And when I cut this one off, you're going to see this one come up off of here. This one will probably lay flat. This one's going to have some crook happen to it too. It'll move left or right. So I'm going to start by cutting just a shallow slab cut off of this. I'm looking for around a four or five, maybe even six inch uh, opening face on the top of this. Uh, once I get it off, then I'm going to go ahead and take a fletch cut from just underneath there of an inch and five eighths thick. Then more than likely I'll turn it 180 degrees, put that side on the bed and do the same to the other side, cut a shallow slab cut and then an inch and five eighths. That way we keep the cant balanced. So the strategy we're gonna use on this is cutting basically slabs off of it keeping full width slabs that'll have tension on one side and compression on the other and those shouldn't crook very bad we can get the logs split apart by doing that and then turn them and cut them into two befores if we try to block it out into some three and a half wide or four inch wide cants to block into two befores, those will uh, bow or crook by the time we get them out of the log. 